claims the two roommates who survived the massacre were awake and texting each other while their four friends were stabbed to death one by one. This new revelation reportedly coming from grand jurors on the case and leaked to family members. Now, the only suspect, Brian Koberger, is still awaiting trial. According to the probable cause filing, one surviving roommate says she witnessed the killer described as having, quote, bushy eyebrows walking past her and then out of the home. Prosecutors say they do have Koberger's DNA found on a knife sheath left under one of the victims, and the judge has entered a not guilty plea on Koberger's behalf. Let's bring in Misty Maris, legal analyst and trial attorney. Uh, Misty, thank you so much for your time. So this is a new twist. It allegedly comes from grand jurors in the case, but no one is going on a record. What was your initial reaction to this potential bombshell? As far as this is concerned, it's really difficult to verify whether this information is actually true. So let's go through a little bit of the history of the case. When the news first broke about this terrible, tragic killing, we learned that there were two roommates who survived the attacks who were in the house at the time. Now, at first we heard that they were both asleep. They didn't wake up till the following day. Then hits the probable cause affidavit. Well, the story begins to change. One of the roommates now had this encounter where she sees the assailant in the house that evening. So this is a dramatic change from the information that was set forth in that probable cause affidavit. If it were in fact the case that the two roommates were awake and texting during that time. So what does it mean for the case? Well, that would certainly be contemporaneous evidence relayed in those text messages as to what the two roommates heard and saw that night. Now, again, we haven't verified whether or not this is true, and we likely won't know until the trial actually unfolds, but it would certainly be a game changer for the prosecution. Well, it certainly would, Missy, and we know that there is, you know, a gag order in this case. That's, you know, the fact uh, that, that we need to remember so information, whether or not it's true, and even if they're doing it anonymously. If the leaker is a grand juror, there are very, very strict rules about what grand juries can say in the public sphere. Now, those rules change jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but Idaho has a similar rule to New York. Grand jurors are not allowed to speak to anybody about the evidence that they see in the courtroom, about the uh, deliberations as far as coming to that conclusion of actually coming back with an indictment. So this would all be completely off limits if in fact a grand juror was leaking this information. And there could be serious repercussions. It could be contempt of court. It could put the whole indictment at issue, depending on the nature of the communication. So that is certainly a problem. The gag order is really far and really expansive with respect to the prosecution, the defense, and any statements made or evidence that comes into uh, evidence that comes into the public sphere. So yes, there are very serious repercussions associated with that. Now that being said, an anonymous leakers are sometimes number one difficult to verify and sometimes difficult to identify. So it truly depends on the nature of the communication and whether or not that person can actually be tracked down. But keep in mind, anything that comes out in the public outside of the courtroom could potentially find its way into the trial, depending on uh, how this how this happens and how the information has come to, to light. Thank you for watching. Go Question I could retrieve. Um, have, have we looked at any boyfriends or any ex boyfriends, any spouses as a potential suspect? I will tell you, we are looking at everyone. Um, we are every tip we get, and yet there's no one that we're not going to talk to, there's no one we're not going to interview, there's no one that we're not going to look into. Um, and we're going to do our due diligence, we're going to make sure that uh, nothing goes unturned. And we um, do everything we can with this, all the resources and final answer. Thanks, you, Brian. So there were, oh, sorry, I'm Emma Epperly with this book's Hi. interview. Hi. Um, so there were other uh, roommates who lived at that, uh, that residence. Um, were the roommates home at the time of the attack? Uh, there, was, um, there was other people home at that time, but we were not just focusing just on them. We're focusing on everybody that um, may be coming and going from that residence. So since they were home, was it a hostage situation? No, it was not. Um, and then did um, they didn't call it into police, so 
were they um, injured? Were, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm at the office folks, I review. Hi. Um, so there were other uh, roommates who lived at that, uh, that residence. Um, were the roommates home at the time of the attack? Uh, there, was, um, there was other people home at that time, but we were not just focusing just on them, we're focusing on everybody that um, may be coming and going from that residence. So since they were home, was it a hostage situation? No, it was not. Um, and then did, um, they didn't call it into police, so were they um, injured? They were not injured, um, but like I said, we're still following up with everybody that um, could have been in that area. And how can you say it's a uh, targeted attack if um, you don't have a suspect? Like I said, we take the totality of the situation, we try to make the best um, bit of information we can with everything that comes in. And you said earth threat to the public, and earlier I heard you say you can't be sure that there is no threat. I just want to clarify what um, your stance is on that at this time. So we, we did believe, we still believe it's a targeted attack. But the reality is, is there's still a person out there who committed four horrible, horrible crimes. So I think we got to go back to um, there is a, a threat out there still, possibly. We don't know. We don't believe it's going to be to anybody else. But we all have to be um, aware of our surroundings and make sure that we're watching out for each other. Why would the chief say that he doesn't believe that there's a, tri a threat to the, other, to the other people, to the public? How would he know that? It was too early in the case. So that means you knew who did this, who the suspects were, or the suspect. You knew it was an isolated, targeted attack, that it wouldn't happen again. And they got a funding for one million. They got resources on that. I believe we knew it was the Greek lifestyle. It was the fraternities and the sororities allegedly who did this. He seemed to know too early in the case. I wonder, was it written on the walls that it was a targeted attack? Was it written who did it? I'm sure it wasn't, but they found things. They found footprints. They found three unidentified male DNAs. So they had an idea. They had a clue from the beginning. Still, possibly, we don't know, we don't believe it's going to be to anybody else, but we all have to be um, aware of our surroundings and make sure that we're watching out for each other. Okay, and then one other follow-up. Um, I know you said when the call came in, it was for an unconscious per person, and also that was a stabbing. It seems, just from an outside perspective looking in, like that would be um, not the first thing a, a person calling in would Think. You're right, um, but the report that we got was that it was an unconscious individual. It wasn't until our officers arrived on scene, uh, went in to do um, caregiving check on the individual who was unconscious that we um, found the scene that we found. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Parts of ABC News. Just to follow up on what she asked, so the other two roommates were there at the time of the attack? All the information that we have from our investigation is that yes, they were. Okay, but they were unhurt. That is correct. So is there any explanation as to why it took so long then for someone to call 911 witnesses to an incident at 3 or 4 in the morning and the 911 call didn't come until noon? I don't think I ever said that they were witnesses. I said they were there. Um, so, you know, we don't know why that call came in at noon and not um, in the middle of the night. Um, would have we loved for that to have happened? Yes, but that, that's not how it took place. So um, we're, that's why we're investigating everything still to try to pull all the pieces together. Were they one of the people, were, were they the 911 caller? Uh, at this point in time, um, I'm not going to divulge who our 911 caller is um, just because I want to keep the um, integrity of the investigation at this point, okay? ABC News. Just to follow up on what she asked, so the other two roommates were there at the time of the attack? All the information that we have from our investigation is that yes, they were. Okay, but they were unhurt. That's correct. 
So is there any explanation as to why it took so long then for someone to call 911? You have surviving witnesses to an incident at 3 or 4 in the morning, and the 911 call didn't come until noon? I don't think I ever said that they were witnesses. I said they were there. Um, so, you know, we don't know why that call came in at noon and not um, in the middle of the night. Um, would have we love for that to have happened? Yes, but that, that's not how it took place. So um, we're, that's why we're investigating everything still to try to pull all the pieces together. Were they one of the people, were, were they the 911 caller? Uh, at this point in time, um, I'm not going to divulge who our 911 caller is um, just because I want to keep the um, integrity of the investigation at this point, okay? Okay. And last question, are you able to tell whether the same weapon was used on all four victims? You know, that's why we're having the autopsies done. The autopsy will confirm that and hopefully collect um, some evidence for us, um, even from, from those. That's why you do um, the autopsies is to try to be thorough and try to gather more. So um, we'll leave that. That, that, that would probably be something that would come out later. Uh, Chief, if you don't mind elaborating a bit more on those those two people, was it two people? Um, what have those people shared about the circumstances of that night, what they saw or didn't see? Well, I'm not going to um, go into what they shared um, that night. Obviously, that's part of our investigation. That's part of the information that we're trying to um, build our complete story with. So um, at that point, as far as that goes, we're not going to go any further into um, what they what they know, what they don't know. And how, how many were? How many were there? Um, we believe two. Just Fox News. Uh, you all have said that the, these uh, killings are targeted. Can you share with us why you believe they are targeted uh, killings? And uh, do you know who, if any of the victims, were the actual targets? of the uh, killings. Um, as we stated earlier in the previous press release, uh, our press conference, we believe they're targeted um, because we take the totality of all the circumstances that we're looking at. Um, do we know the person that it was targeted? Um, we're not uh, uh, able to say at this point in time um, due to our investigation, but um, we still believe that uh, but we, like I said, we take a totality of everything that we're looking at. Hi, I'm Emma Burley from the Spokesman Review. Um, I know you said you're not going to release who the 911 caller was, but um, was the killer the 911 caller? I will tell you no. Actually, maybe just go to this one first. And... So what I'll, I'll say to that is um, it was made from the roommate's call, or phone, excuse me, um, and we're not going to divulge who made that call. Um, to be, um, it's part of our investigation still, and when we get ready to release that, we will. Hi, Christina Corbin with Fox News. Um, the male subject whom the women called, um, has he been ruled out as a suspect or person of interest? Everything that we have taken from the from those calls, um, we have followed up on, we've cleared, and, and we um, believe that uh, there's no connection there. It's just following up on the, the 911 call, you said that you don't believe that's a killer. Uh, can you conclusively rule out the person that called 911 from inside the home as a suspect in this case? Can you just ask that one more time? This is the home that called 911. Uh, that was not one of the roommates. Can you conclusively rule that person out as a suspect at this point? I don't think I said that it wasn't one of the roommates. I said that uh, it was used with the um, roommate's phone. I believe somebody asked. So, will you clarify that for me? You're not, you're not confirming a roommate called 911 and said that they were 